So this video is a tutorial on how to give mobs custom drops in Bedrock Edition. So I'll show you quickly how it works and then I'll show you an example. So when you kill a zombie it drops gold instead of rotten flesh or anything like that. There's two different methods to do custom drops. Um, so the way I'm showing it is the first method I'm going to show you is by replacing the rotten flesh and that's the one that replaces it with one gold and then the second one is by adding an armor which isn't armor and then replacing that with an item so the first method you need a repeating unconditional always active command block which is test4 and then it looks so test4 at entity with the name rotten flesh so it finds any entities with the name rotten flesh so rotten flesh unless anything's renamed um, and then sends a the signal. The second one is chain conditional and always active. So execute at entity with the name rotten flesh. So it's found an entity with the name rotten flesh and it's doing this command at that entity. And it loads the structure gold one, one block above. So it's just the same x, the same y, plus one, and then the same z. So it just stops it from deleting a block below it. Um, and then this custom structure is just a flower that I've renamed gold. And then the last block is chain conditional always active and it deletes the rotten flesh that is detected to stop it from constantly spawning those in and getting rid of the rotten flesh. Because if you don't have this one, you will have rotten flesh as well, but it will constantly spawn the custom item on top of it. And then as I said, if you spawn in the zombies which well this works for any zombies if I get a zombie egg this one is just for every single zombie so kill this and it drops a gold a gold gold there grab that one quickly so I've got a three and another one so four so that works for normal zombies now the second method only works for the custom zombies you make but I will link a video on how to make all zombies your custom zombies so the first block for this one again repeating unconditional always active so execute at so it's going to run the command at this location and the location is wherever it sees an entity with the name acacia button so any acacia buttons and then it runs structure load gold 2 and then again the same X, one above the Y, and the same Z. So this will load in my structure gold 2. So the difference between gold 1 and gold 2 on my structures as they're saved is just gold 1 is one of the items and gold 2 is five of the items because the second one's a rarer drop. Um, and as I said, the only problem with this method is it will only work for zombies or for, it will only work for any mob that you've added the acacia button drop to. Um, so which is these ones here, so if I load some of these, these have a chance of dropping five rather than just one. There we go, so see this one it looks like three but they've just stacked, so it's given you five instead. So that's a rare drop and you get more, which you could use for different drops or you could use for more of the more common drop, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's how to do the custom drops that's the two methods so you've got the replacing the rotten flesh method and the replacing the custom drop well custom armor piece of the um, mob so I'm gonna run through how to do this and I'll include how to get it to drop an acacia button in the first place so firstly I'll do this method here so we're gonna do it for skeletons this time and the drops of skeletons are bones arrows occasionally bows but the easiest one for us to do would be bones since it's the most common so we need a repeat unconditional always active block that tests for any entity that has the name oops, there we go bones or bone so test for any entity with the name bone and then the next block chain conditional always active and this one will be getting the location of the bone and putting your custom item on top of it 
So execute the command at that entity with the name phone and then run structure load so it spawns in a structure on top of it and in this case the structure will be an entity I'm just going to call this one sword1 and then again x location stays the same so tilde y location stays the same with one bonus so it's tilde1 so y location plus one and then tilde for the z and then the final command block needs to delete so chain conditional always active and this one is kill that e and it needs to delete the bone to stop it from spawning in loads so name equals bone like that. okay so this is now all set up so this will work for normal skeletons because skeletons normally drop bones um, you have to be aware that this will also this one specifically will also change anything that does drop bones so any other knobs in the game that drop bones this will also change their drops and now all we need to do is create the custom drop so sword one so for that I'm gonna hop over to my structure block save and change it so it's a one by one by one so it's just one block to have an entity in it then save it as sword one and then we can grab any sword we want just purple bone sword and it really doesn't matter because it can be any item in the game here as long as you got the name right so I'm gonna give it smite 5 so now bone sword smite 5 this is gonna replace every bone that spawns in and I'm gonna pop it in there Save as sword one. And now I can grab a skeleton spawn egg. And when we kill it, it drops arrows and it also drops bone sword. I didn't really show that one, but there's another skeleton. So th this one again chops bones, the bones get replaced by the sword bone sword smite 5 and then the second method will only work for that specific mob because we'll put as an item that I you won't use for anything else and it will only work for custom mobs as well so for this one you need two command blocks so first one is repeat unconditional always active and it's x execute at any entity with the name and now I normally use buttons because uh, there's multiple different types if you're using this for an, uh, an adventure map or something like that you don't need to have lots of different types of buttons in it you can just have one they can actually have in their inventory so it's a good one to use so if I just use the jungle button since it's unlikely that that ever pops up in someone's inventory and they can drop it and get it replaced so it's a good one to do and then run structure load and loading the structure side it's sword 1 so we may as well do a second sword so sword 2 and then tilde tilde 1 tilde so again same x same y plus 1 same z and all the second one needs to do now is chain conditional always active so it goes off when that one gets triggered and this one's just going to kill the jungle button so that it doesn't spawn in lots of them yep and now we can test this well there's a jungle button but before we test it we do need to create the sword 2 item so it can be anything we want anything at all I'm gonna make it a sword because well, I've named it sword so we'll get a diamond sword we'll grab enchantment book of anything at all so looting three being of aphrods it really doesn't matter as I said before so there's a diamond sword with looting three bane of aphrods and we'll give it a coloured name as well because may as well and then so delete that name it so green sword 
because I'm lazy. So the Looking 3 and Bane of Arthropods 5. So that's our custom sword. Pop it down there. Save as Sword 2. Or whatever you put it as in the command block. Save that. Can delete that one now. And now whenever you drop a jungle button, it will replace it with Green Sword, Looting 3, Bane of Arthropods 5. So that means it works. Now all we have to do is create a mob where it drops the jungle button so that when it drops the jungle button you get the custom sword. So if I just quickly block this in so that the skeleton won't be able to get back out. If I spawn a skeleton here. So we've got a skeleton. Now for this we're going to be using the replace item command. So replace item entity atty and then we're just going to specify which one we want. So skeleton in a radius of two. So this just means to type skeleton so it has to be a skeleton that it, it replaces the item of and then within two blocks of me just to make sure it does it to this specific one here. Now we want slot.armor.head so this replaces the item in their head armor slot and then slot zero. Uh, so this just is specifying that we want the item to go on their head um, and then we type in what we want it to be so jungle button is what we decided and just one of them. The amount that you put in doesn't matter because no matter how many it drops, it drops them as a stack so it will always get replaced by one but I just put one for the sake of that. Replace slot armor head slot zero of skeleton with one jungle button and then we're going to save this skeleton make sure to make it 2y so that it actually fits in. Save it as skeleton 2 save and load so if we break this we can load in a few of these skeletons and now these skeletons because they drop bones this one will go through and it will spawn in the first sword that we did like that see so we've got the bone sword but also it, there is a chance the same chance of it dropping its helmet of it dropping a jungle button which will then get replaced by the green sword that we made And there we go. So that one got the red drop and it dropped green sword. And so it's, that's how to make two separate sp custom spawns and obviously one of them's got a lower... Oh, that, see that one's dropped both then. So the first method has an increased chance of dropping it and it works for non-custom mobs. But then you can't have bones anywhere else. Like for skeletons you can't have bones anywhere else or rotten flesh anywhere else in the map because it will get replaced. And then the second method, it's not a guarantee it's not as likely to drop, but that can be good for a lot of items. Um, the main issue with the button method, so the second one, is it places a button on the head, which for mobs that normally burn in the daylight, it means they don't. So that might be an issue for you, but there's not a lot of work around on that at the moment. So yeah, that's how you create the custom swans, so that one didn't drop anything but end the video on this one instead. So if you want to watch a video on how to make normal spawns get replaced by your custom mob spawns then click the video on the left and if you want to support the channel through my Patreon there's a link in the description and if you've got any questions or tutorials that you'd like to see comment them below. Thanks for watching.